science, science, science in pajamas, pajamas, pajamas. All right, so welcome back. Here we are. Um, we're going to be talking about mutations specifically. We're going to be talking about point mutations. Now, a point mutation is when there is a change to one single base. So kind of like when you point at something, you're being very specific. When you have a point mutation, it is very specific because it's only going to affect one base. Now that one base can have any number of effects and that's what we're gonna talk about today. Now remember, a mutation is simply a change to the DNA and a point mutation is a change to one base in the DNA. Now we have different kinds. We can actually classify point mutations into different categories. Um, transition versus transversion, depending on what kind of base is being switched, you know, purine versus pyrimidine into purine versus pyrimidine. We have missense, nonsense, and silent, and that's going to discuss um, more so how it affects the overall amino acid. So here we have, let's say, in our DNA, the original DNA says ATA. Well, during transcription, the mRNA codon would be UAU. And if we use our handy dandy little mRNA decoding chart, we look that up, we have UAU tyrosine. So that would lead to an amino acid called tyrosine being in that specific location in that protein. All right, so let's talk about trans transition. Now transition is when you replace a purine with another purine or a pyrimidine with another pyrimidine. So essentially you're keeping the same structural component there. Now pyrim pyrimidines are cytosine and thymine, purines are adenine and guanine. So let's see. Uh, All right, so let's maybe we change the first one. So maybe the mutation is in the first letter. So instead of a, A is a purine, and in a transition, you switch one purine for another. So the other purine would be guanine. So it would be G, T, A. So we switch one purine for another. And then we can have, if we take that and we transcribe it, we end up with C, A, U. And if we look at our chart, let's see, we have CAU, CAU gives us histidine. Or histidine. So transition, you exchange a purine for a purine or a pyrimidine for a pyrimidine, but you're exchanging one for the same type. And then a transversion is when you replace a purine with a pyrimidine or vice versa, a pyrimidine with a purine. So let's stay with that first letter. Um, we're going back to the original ATA. Well, we can use T or C. So maybe, possibly, instead of um, switching it for a G, which is a purine, it gets swapped with a C, cytosine. And that is a pyrimidine. So we're changing a purine into a pyrimidine. So it's going to be C, P, A. Notice we're just changing one base. But that can have different effects. So that's going to be G, A, U in the mRNA. And G, A, U gives us G, A, U, aspartic acid. All right, 
So that's, those two classifications are based on what type of base is being exchanged for what type of base. Now, missense and nonsense is based on the actual end product, the amino acid, what is being formed as a result of the change. <coughs> so missense would be when you exchange one amino acid for another. So pretty much both of these, the, this transition and this transversion are examples of missense mutations because we had tyrosine, but in both cases we ended up with different amino acids. So those are also both examples of missense. This would be a missense transition. This would be a missense transversion. We can also have, let's see, maybe, sorry, I'm checking on my math. Maybe we can have a G, A. So we have, again, just one base is different. We exchange a pyrimidine or a purine, so it is a transversion, but it's also going to be a missense because when we go through, we do the U, C, A, or sorry, U, C, U. We transcribe it, and then we take that and we translate it, and we get serine. So we end up with, again, a different amino acid. That's missense. Nonsense is when there's a mutation with one base, and it leads to a stop codon. And that is going to be problem problematic because... As we talked about already, when a stop codon is reached, everything lets go and you're not adding anything else. So any amino acids beyond that point are not going to get added. So let's see. If we change... Let's see. A, T, T. Change that last one. So it is, again, a transversion because we went from a purine to a pyrimidine, but this one's also going to be a nonsense mutation because when we transcribe it, we get UAA. And when that gets translated, that's a stop codon. So that means that this is going to tell the ribosome, the tRNA, is that nothing else needs to get added and anything else beyond this point isn't going to be added on. So this could actually shorten the DNA or sorry, the gene and well, not the gene, but it shortens the protein and that can have big effects on how well the protein would function or even if it functions at all. And the last one that we have is called a silent mutation. Now a silent mutation is one that there is no change at all to the amino acid. It results in the same amino acid. So let's see. We start out with tyrosine. Okay, so A, E, G. This time it's a transition because we went from one purine to another purine. When we transcribe it, we get U, A, C, and when U, A, C gets translated, we get tyrosine. So even though there is a mutation in the GNA, we call it a silent mutation because it has zero effect on the protein. It's going to result in the exact same amino acid in the exact same place. Now, if you've looked at the amino acid chart, you'll notice how it's very common for, let's say with leucine, is on this side, that C-U-U, C-U-C, C-U-A, C-U-G, all of those will result in, or also U-U-A, U-U-G, 
those all result in leucine being put into the amino acid chain. And that's what we call redundancy. The nice thing about redundancy is that cases like this with the silent mutation, if there is a mutation, it may not have any effect, which means that if there's no effect, there's no way it can be harmful. So redundancy just gives us a way to be able to allow for the possibility of mutations because statistically they're going to happen, but it also prevents any unwanted or negative, sorry, it prevents the likelihood of unwanted or negative mutations from occurring. It's not a fail safe. As we saw here, there are still ways to get incorrect amino acids. So yeah, I hope that helps. I hope that this helps you understand the different types of point mutations. On our next video, we will talk about frame shift mutations. But in the meantime, stay healthy and stay well, you guys. All right, bye-bye.